Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. It is uh, Friday, nearing the end of day, and traditionally, uh, with time permitting, on my end of day Fridays, I like to do a little bit of something for me, and that usually entails on uh, completing Project Apocalypse on my Duramax here. Uh, in the last episode on this truck, we ended up installing some power inverters in a battery bank along with some electrical stuff uh, inside of this toolbox bag. This is an uh, ongoing project. It's been happening for several weeks. Uh, it's gonna consist of two deep cycle batteries. We've got some junction blocks that are going in here. There's some breakers and some fuses and one sine wave inverter, uh, one heavy duty non sine wave inverter. And then I've got another space or more space in here. I might stack in uh, one more larger pure sine wave inverter. Um, that being said, I do not have enough amperage on my 12 volt DC side to, uh, to feed that constant load should I ever have to hook up a bunch of equipment to that to run it. Uh, this is uh, part of my hurricane preparedness kit. Uh, it allows me to have uh, quite a bit of 120 volt power uh, at a mobile location. Now, what I'm fixing to do here is, rather than replace that with some ginormous aftermarket 400 amp alternator, I have located a secondary factory alternator, which I'm gonna mount in this location right here. On this particular engine, these LBZs, when they came in a medium duty platform, they had a provision that would allow uh, a dual alternator system, and that's what I'm going to attempt to install today. I have a, uh, a replacement or another alternator. It is a, uh, a factory unit, factory size. It's an HC Delco. I believe this is another 145 amp alternator, and I think, I think that this one over here is only 100 amp. I'm not really certain. I don't remember when I put it in, but either way, I'm adding that 100 and, uh, 145 amp over here. Uh, that way I have uh, two alternators that I can select to use if need be. So overall, this system will have uh, one, two batteries up front, two batteries in the back. The rear system will be able to connect with the front system and it'll also have the dual power generating capacity. So what we need to do in order to install that is I had to acquire the factory medium duty truck bracket. I've got to, I had to acquire the, uh, the factory bolts that go through. There is another pigtail that connects to the alternator that allows that one to come on. I'm not sure if I want to integrate that one into the truck's factory wiring or if I want to just put it on a switch and then run that alternator manually on a switch or not. I, I don't know what I want to do with that yet. Uh, however, I do want to go ahead and get these parts installed. Now this is actually really risky for me right now because I'm going to have to change out this serpentine belt with a longer belt. Uh, we can see right here that if I put a bolt through this, that bolt is going to rub on the belt and it'll rub a hole through it. So I can't just mount that alternator here and then hope for the best. I've got to be able to uh, get this thing set up with the extra pulley that gets bolted on uh, and with the longer belt. So we're going to start. I'm going to go ahead and pull the fan shroud off. We're going to get this belt off of here. I'm going to get all the pieces out and get them all kind of set up and mocked up. And we're going to see if uh, if it's going to fit preliminarily. And then if it does, we're going to go ahead and get those components bolted on. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very interesting custom modification video. Opening Z hood. Our brake rotor. There was our brake rotor. Okay, so I want to head off some naysayer comments real quick. Uh, one of the things that I, we're going to find in common here is everyone's going to go, why don't you just get yourself a generator? And, and I have a generator. I do have a 8,000 watt gasoline power generator at my house. Uh, having said that, uh, it's not really reasonable to store a bunch of gasoline everywhere. There's our pigtail. It's not really reasonable to store a bunch of gasoline for when you need a generator. Plus, gas generators are not always 100% reliable. Uh, therefore, I would like to be able to utilize my diesel fuel supply uh, should the need arise. Uh, as you saw from those uh, inverters in the back there, I've got, what, six, seven, eight, and then if I add the next inverter in there, that's gonna be nine, 10, that'll be 12,000 watts of uh, potential power. Now, inside of the truck right here, I've got a 32 gallon tank 
plus a 90, I think that's a 90 gallon tank. Yeah, that's a 90 gallon auxiliary tank. So that puts me at over 120 gallons of diesel. So if I were to run this engine at a high idle, like 1,000 or 1,100 RPMs, I'm gonna burn about two to three, maybe four gallons per hour. So that gives me almost an entire week of backup power just based on the fuel that I have uh, on board the truck. I would not get an entire week of power if I ran a regular gen set uh, because it just burns through the gasoline. It'll burn five gallons in an eight hour period and I can't sustain that 24 hours at a time. So the idea is uh, what I can do is I can run my gasoline generator during the daytime and then at night when I don't need 50 amps of power like to run my well for example I can just switch over things that are uh, critical like fans and lights and maybe a couple refrigerators and then run that stuff off of the power supply in the truck so I use my gasoline during the day and then use the diesel during the night uh, the other advantage to that scenario is how's that go right there the other advantage to that scenario is that um, the truck is much quieter than a generator so I don't have to run my generator all night long to have power all night long. I can run the truck, which is much quieter. Uh, plus, I don't want to advertise to everybody and their mother that uh, I have electricity and they may not. Uh, hence my reasoning for, uh, well, for having the dual power supply. Uh, additionally, it's also good to have a, a reserve or a backup. Uh, let's say a hurricane comes and I'm going to need my generator and I go to pull the thing out and it started last month but it does not start this month well now what do i gotta do i gotta sit outside in a hurricane and try to fix the generator i'm not interested in doing that so i'm kind of pre-planning this uh ahead of time here all right so let's go ahead and see if this is going to even be possible to get this thing in today uh, i was short one bolt and i had to dig this one out of like the bolt box and i do believe that that is going to be sufficient to reach through we have to bolt this bracket onto this bracket then the alternator will bolt on here and up here does that make sense and this right here this component this is a factory gm component for a medium duty uh duramax i think it came in the lml or the lmms and the lbz's by the way that's uh that's oe stuff believe it or not this is a 15 dollars bracket and if you look on the internet for um, a dual alternator kit for a duramax they sell their own like proprietary bracket systems for this they're like 700 dollars. unbelievable I got that for 15 bucks plus some bolts. So, sorry aftermarket alternator guys, you lost this one. Anyway, I'm gonna tighten this down a little bit and just make sure it fits okay. And then we'll go ahead and pull the fan shroud and uh, get this belt off. We have to install a secondary idler pulley in there, which I do have and I have the bolt for that. So let's just see how this is, uh, this is gonna work out here. Okay, that thing's on, it's not super tight. I'll be able to move it to fit the uh, fit the alternator in there, so um, that's good for now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this uh, plastic cover and the top shroud. Uh, we're gonna do that in super high speed lightning fast motion because it's been seen before. Plus, it's just some boring little plastic clips or whatnot. Y'all better wake up for it's too late. Lord, it's a dance. You know what I think? I'm thinking it's time that we all unite. Cause if we combine the city boys with the boys off in the pines and load up our rifles and form us a line, we're only as weak as the links in the chain. So think for yourself and start using your brain to pit us against one another. So the shroud is out. We now have got a little bit more access uh, to the front accessory drive. Um, I might go ahead and pull this fan shroud out too, just to be able to get back there a little better. It's only three bolts. There's one there. Uh, one there and then one more on that other side. So let me, let me pull this guy out too. But people like me will survive. Blue color baby, I work to get mine. My people don't stand in the winter line. Hunting and fishing and growing the garden. They're starving your family while feeding you lies. What kind of man is ah, Check that out. All right, that's the bottom one. So that's two of these big shroud bolts removed. Let's uh, speed it back up and go over and grab that other one out of there and then we'll have all the accessory stuff off the front of this engine. Almost. Okay, so that third nut that I just mentioned, that was really far away and hard to get. So I, uh, I went ahead and did that part without you guys. Uh, we can see here now that this shroud is actually being captured by the actual fan. So I need to break this fan loose uh, from what would normally be the water pump, but yeah, that's not the case on these Duramaxes. Uh, I'm not sure what's there. I think it's just like a housing or a bracket that holds that fan clutch. Uh, regardless, I need to get that clutch off of that pulley, and I'll do that with a, uh, a pneumatic hammer on the impact driver. 
So what I need to do, let the belt go on. Hook this thing up. We're gonna set up our chisel right on the flat that is on that, uh, that fan clutch there and give it some impact. See the fan turning? Let's get you in a little closer. You can see what I'm speaking about here. Get right down in there. Now watch the nut. See that nut turn? So I should at that point just be able to rotate the fan and then spin the nut off of its pulley right there. See how that's going? See it spinning farther and farther away? So once this thing is loose, I need to not hit the radiator, but I can take the fan and the shroud out in one, uh, one swift motion. Yeah, let me come around up top here so I can reach this a little better. I'm like climbing raw up onto the truck here just to get, uh, be able to reach. We'll spin this guy out. I'm gonna go very slowly. So like I said, I don't want to knock it off and have it uh, have it hit my radiator. Spin it, spin it, spin it. Come on, a couple more threads. I mean, I guess it could hit the radiator. It's already been uh, mangled mangled up by the last person that had the tensioner. Uh, but well, the last person before me that had the tensioner off, I saw gouges of it in the last video. Anyway, fan shroud assembly is coming out. And by the way, since this uh, fan clutch right here has 230,000 miles on it, I am going to replace it with a uh, another unit. I mean, it's still good. It's got plenty of friction left in there. And I don't think I've had any problems out of it. I can hear my fan running, but at 230K, I don't care. I'm changing everything. One of these days, I'll get around to doing the injectors. One day. I should have changed them 130,000 miles ago. Alrighty, let's get uh, back up. Let's get up in here and get our, hello Troy. Let's get our serpentine belt uh, loosened and disconnected. There's our new tensioner we put in last week. Maybe it was two weeks ago. Well, let's get this thing loose. Uh, that way I can get the auxiliary pulley installed and we can uh, get the other nader mounted to see how well everything fits. What I need to do, click that thing in and we'll just give it a tug back in this direction here and we'll pull it off of one of the idler pulleys. There we go. And we'll just let it swing back in that direction. I'll take my ratchet back. Come here, ratchet. There. You know, I probably didn't have to pull that belt off in order to get this pulley set up, but um, but I did. Anyway, this pulley is gonna bolt on right here. I have the, the GM part number. That's this unit right there. I think it's part number Alpha 0409. And this is the factory bolt to hold this pulley in position. I got that on eBay. It was either eBay or Rock Auto the place where you go to find obscure parts. So what we need to do next is screw this guy on. Begin threading. Don't, don't mess up on me now. So we thread this guy down, tighten this pulley on, and then we'll mount the nader and then swap the belt out. Here, we'll spin it a little faster with a socket. It gives us a mechanical advantage. And then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. that some forward clicks right about in there that's good check it to make sure it spins and it does good so now let's get this belt out of here and out of the way some i'm trying not to fling it everywhere because i'd like to keep what i know is the proper belt routing uh, i think i think at this point maybe i can go ahead and get that uh that alternator mounted up and kind of mocked up into position here to see if it fits I hope it's gonna fit. Um, the reason I say that is these uh, DR44s, that's actually a large case. Uh, when these things came with a secondary alternator, uh, they did not run 145 amp, they ran a smaller cased 105 amp. So I'm trying to actually shove a bigger nader in a hole for a, uh, a smaller nader. So it's, I think it'll work, it should work, but um, if it doesn't then, well I have to, then I bought the wrong unit. Shoo. 
move our TCM out of the way for now. Bend that little bracket back. This isn't supposed to be here on the medium duties. That can go right there, I think. Oh, that's enough space. Okie dokie. So here's our two nader bolts. They are gonna go in right here and the other is gonna pass through right here. Those two bolts are going to secure the two mounting holes that are on the alternator case itself. And uh, full disclosure, I realize right here, right now, I have already gone ahead and ended up with the wrong bolts. Uh, if I run this bolt in all the way, the threads are going to bottom out and I've got like three quarters of an inch too much sticking out. So these are actually too long. Um, I know I don't have any more. I will have to order them, uh, but I've gone too far and we're gonna put this together anyway, even if I have to use these bolts. I'll probably just shim them out with a nut until I can get a replacement. Uh, so that's the first uh, first little hiccup here. I have the wrong hardware. It is what it is, whatever, I don't care. Incorrect hardware or not, we shall proceed. So here is our new Delco Nader unit. Let's get this thing kind of in that little mount and I'll put the one bolt in straight away just to take the weight here. And that's starting to thread in, okay. And the one on the bottom, put that through the bracket. Okay, so now that thing's in the position where it's supposed to rest. And it looks like all of the the grooves of the belts are going to line up. So this appears to, to have the correct offsets and everything. Let's um, we'll stick some shims, probably just some big nuts uh, on these bolts and shim this all this space up right here. We're gonna go ahead and bolt this thing in. I think this is, uh, it'll work temporarily. Here, let's pull the bottom one back out. I think I'll use just some nuts for that. We'll use that one and then Do it like this, sure, whatever. It'll be okay. It's just temporary. It'll temporarily be there for years. Watch this. I hope I have enough nuts on it. I think so. Okay, that's probably good. Yep, it's locking it in, that's fine. So as long as that does not interfere with the belt, which I don't think it will because the belt comes from the bottom of this pulley up and over, so that should be okay. Let's, uh, let's get some nuts on our top bolt here and uh, I think this Vader will be secure. All right, here we go. Two more spacer nuts on that bolt. I, uh, I hope that's gonna be sufficient. Let's find out. It's not lining up. Take the bottom one a little looser. We're out of alignment. Is that better? Sure. What is problem now? Hmm. I will hammer my bolts in. There. There it goes. I know it's ugly, isn't it? But it's working for now. I just need shorter bolts, that's all. Oh look, this connector is also the wrong connector. See that? Hmm. I'll have to get the uh, appropriate connector for this particular alternator. That's the thing with custom stuff. It, uh, well, it's custom, that's the way it is. And that's our bracket bolt from earlier. Yeah, okay, that unit is mounted on and installed. Let us see about this belt right here. This is supposed to be the belt for the factory design or the factory size belt rather. So let's see if this thing's gonna fit. If everything fits, we're good and we can ride today. Uh, if it doesn't fit, then no, um, uh, that's kind of a problem. Also, another observation, I'm going to have to change these pulleys on both of these units. Uh, this one is a larger diameter than that one over there. Uh, that one's actually going to be spinning faster, but uh, again, since this is on a diesel configuration and we're only going to be running this system at like a thousand RPM, 
I want some overdrive of both of these alternators. So they're actually gonna be spinning faster than the factory spec down at those low speeds. But we're gonna have to do that later because I do not have replacement uh, pulleys just yet. I haven't gotten that far into the parts catalog on this particular project. Come here, belt. Alrighty, well, unfortunately, my GoPro died in the middle of that and I didn't notice, uh, so we did actually miss some footage. And then about an hour and a half went by because this belt would not fit and I could not get another belt to fit. So I went down to the parts store and found another pulley which is smaller and managed to, uh, to barely get this thing to fit inside of here. Um, I did order a replacement longer belt. It's about an inch longer than this one and that will fit. But uh, for the time being, we're gonna run with the one that we've got and I can switch it out later on. So having said all that, let's go ahead and get the fan, uh, the fan clutch switched out. Like I said, I got a new one and uh, we can get the shroud back together, put the fan back on and then uh, we can fire this thing up and make sure that this belt is going to run straight and true and it's going to behave appropriately and i believe it is my icrometer tells me that it is in line with the rest of the ribs and this uh this should work out to perfection so let us unbolt this fan clutch from the fan the fan gets reused the clutch does not let's get this thing out of here we're going to reuse these bolts Get rid of that. That is our old 230,000 mile viscous clutch. And the new one, where is it? Oh, it's hiding. It's over here in the box. There's the new one, another Delco part. That's what I put on it. They're more expensive, but that's what goes there. Plus this stuff's not easy to get to and I didn't want to put cheapo parts in hard to reach places. Like I'll throw a cheap old part on an easy to reach place because if it's junk and I got a warranty, it's no big deal. But the hard to reach ones, I'd really rather not. Okay, the bolt holes are lined up-ish. Got any more. Okay, let's get these guys in. That one. Two. Number three. I kind of missed the mark too. I was going to order an upgraded fan to go with this. And when I went to go back to order them, company was sold out and they were discontinued. I waited too long. It made me sad. No worries. Okay. All right, so that's all set up. Let's get this thing and the shroud back on the front of the engine and uh, then we can stop things the engine. All right, let's get all this stuff situated here. I'm gonna climb up and set the stuff down behind that radiator. Huh. Climbing sit up here on top of the shroud. I need to lower it down and uh, my foot's got a cramp. There. Okay, uh, real quick. It says top side on it right here so I know which side goes up at the top in the middle. And we lower this unit right on down into its hole here. go. I'm trying to get, uh, get everything lined up here as best I can. The fan's a little, or the shroud's a little off. It needs to be rotated. By the way, these fan blades are sharp, especially the back side. They will cut you if you slide your hand down them. They get sharpened over time. Like as this thing ingests dirt and sand and it goes off the trailing edge of the fan blade, it'll wear away the back of the blade and it sharpens them. So an old fan, you can take the thing out and it's got like a razor sharp edge on it. It's not okay. Oh, it came off. No. Not going so well. All right, new strategy. I'm gonna bolt the shroud on so the shroud's in the right position. And I'll try the fan again. Okay. Pulling up, reaching down, 
holding the center of the fan as best I can. Don't have space, it's not gonna work. Threads are starting to. Nope, came off again. And yes, I can get this belt out of here without pulling the fan off if I want to change this belt out with a longer one. Okay, threads are started. Good, good, good. That's what I want. Da -da 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 -da. Spin that blade around blade keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. We'll spin her around, hit it with that uh, impact driver just to make it tight, and then I'll get the three bolts for the shroud on, then we can put the, the outer shroud back together. Ow. Now this Nader is not wired yet. It doesn't have a power cable from the back of it, and it doesn't have the, uh, the exciter wires to kick the thing on, but uh, I can wire that up uh, later on. Okay, fan is on. I am stuck. All right, coming in with the air chisel one more time. Gonna spin that guy around until I've got a good straight on. Hmm, that's not it. There, that looks pretty straightish. I think, woohoo, you guys almost fell down. There we go, let's give it some impacts to tighten it. And we're good, it's on. All right guys, so I skipped ahead. We uh, put the shroud part back on, that was boring and inconsequential. So uh, let's go ahead, hit the key, restart things the engine and make sure that this belt right here is going to run straight and true. And by beginning engine starting sequence now. <laughs> okay, the fan didn't fly off, the belt didn't fly off. The belt's running straight. This is good, I like it. Okay, now let's bust off the meter. We can run some power to the, the pins on this alternator real quick. And uh, let's find out if this thing's gonna charge. All right guys, it is proof of concept time. Are we ready for this? Let's see if we cannot uh, make the system work. So here's how we're gonna do this. I've got the battery in the back exposed. Pretend that's all wired nicely. I've got the 28 foot jumper cables connected to the battery. So we have live wires right here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and ground our ground side right there. That's no good alternator ground. This cable right here is attached to the stud on the back of the alternator, okay? So we're gonna connect that one to our positive side going back to our battery. But before we do that, Let's take some voltage meter readings on the battery voltage on that auxiliary battery in the back. So right here we've got our negative lead for the meter. I'm going to attach that to this uh, extension lead right here. It's just two alligator clips. And we can ground the meter out to the alternator case. In this case I'll use the bolt. We've got our top side right here. Now, out back, we've got just about 12 volts on that alternator, okay? If we go to the power wire, oh, I'm sorry, at the battery. If we go to the power wire at the alternator, no volts, see that? So we're gonna leave this thing connected. 12 volts at the battery, no volts at the alternator, okay? Let's make the connection. And now we're hanging out battery voltage. See that? So what I need to do at this point is take some power off of this power cable and energize the diode circuits on the alternator and it should come on. And if it doesn't, then, uh, well, then it means I was wrong. I was wrong a lot. Connect our lead. I think that's the one. That one's 
connect it, okay? Okie dokie, let's fire this thing up and see if, uh, if we're gonna go here. So I've got the exciter wire connected uh, to battery positive right there. We've got the meter connected to the battery out back and the alternator lead is not doing anything. So let's connect this nader lead right here. Hold that on. And look at there, 13.6, 13.5. Disconnect it. it. Drops down to regular voltage. Reconnect it. 13.5, 6, 7. Awesome. So it appears to be working. Here, let's get her connected again. Put that up. Check voltage. Yeah, see, look, now it's hanging out 12 volts. So we just saw 13 is the change here. And we're getting bad connection. Yeah, something's not right. See that? Now we're down to regular battery voltage. Nothing. Oh, there we go. Bad connection. Bad connection. Or that uh, alternator was taking its sweet time to come on and I'm too impatient to wait for it. It could have been that. Either way, voltage is climbing. We're 13.7 now. Super cool. I wonder if it'll shut down if I disconnect the exciter wire. Let's see what it does. And it does not shut down when I disconnect the exciter wire. So, let's go ahead and shut off the vehicle and see if we see a voltage drop at the battery out back. Okay, powering down, voltage fell. So, let's reconnect the exciter wire here. And then I will restart and we'll see if it comes up on voltage properly. Plug that in. 12.37, pay attention. Restocking the engine. Come on, Nader, wake up. I think there's an issue with this actual alternator here. Yeah, because now she doesn't want to come on. See that? Connections, nothing. And now it doesn't want to come on. I think I've got a defective unit here. Well, regardless, we saw it made voltage, so in concept, this, uh, this should be working. There we go. There's some power. It just took a little while. All right, let's do one more test since we now know that this thing is sending charging voltage. Let's see if it sends any amperage back. So we're at 13.76 volts, okay? 13.75, 13.76. I've got the big inverter down there wired up to the battery. It's connected to this power strip. This power strip is switched on and this heater is connected to that power strip. So if I go ahead and run this, theoretically, that alternator should be running this heat gun just as long as uh, battery voltage does not drop. If battery voltage does not drop, or charging voltage doesn't drop below what normal battery voltage would be, uh, that's proof of concept. So let's fire this thing up. We're on high, full blast. Ooh, I heard the engine respond. Okay. okay we'll just leave this very safe, right? We'll leave that right there. Let's go check. 13.5 volts, look at that. So it did draw down some voltage. Now, let's make sure our truck inside's not affected by it. That's negative, that's 14, 14.1 or 14.2. Actually, we can check that with the meter. We should have two different charging system voltages here. Watch, we'll put it right here. It's on the truck side. 13.75. Thirteen fifty-four. Absolutely perfect. This thing's working. Oh look, there's current flowing. I see some smoke coming out of that connector. So we do have current flow. Let's see if we can create an arc right here. Yeah, that thing's drawing it down a lot now. 
Got that still going. That thing's pulling a lot of power. A couple thousand watts at least. 1324, 1322. Let's disconnect our exciter wire, see what happens. Mm, we're not dropping, so it's holding voltage, okay. Makes me wonder if I even need those wires on this thing. So one more thing, we need to get a visual representation that there is current flow. Well, that's hot, I can tell you right now. There's some current going through that wire, that's hot. Woo, look at that. She is charging. See that? Now let's check voltage at the battery with the load on it. Look at that. 10.8 volts. Yep, that thing is a lot of current draw. Let's reconnect our, uh, our nader one more time and back up to voltage. Excellent. All right, I'm going to go out back and turn that off. Watch this voltage spike when I click off the... Uh, that load that we've got. So right now we're at 13 and a half. The load shut down. We should start to see voltage climb back up. Okay, with the inverter and the uh, that heat gun removed, voltage is coming back up. We're gonna do one more little experiment here just to seriously seal the deal. Let's go turn the uh, center inverter back on, powering on. We're on right there, red light says we're good, and load power up. So that pretty much should be all that that alternator's got. 13.3, 13.4. Watch this. High idle. Give it a chance to catch up. Let's kill the load. Bring idle up a little bit more. Not that much. How about this one? There we go. So 13.5. Let's shut down all of our loads with high. Actually, no, let's turn our load back on. Oh, we're on low. Look at that. Let's turn it off. Oh, this is cool, it works, and full steam. I'd say that's proof of concept. It is confirmed that the system is in fact working. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect and shut down all my hubbub, turning off the power strip. We do not need, oh, it's still sending amps, look at that. Yep, zzz, zzz. Yep, so it's still trying to charge this battery. See, I can disconnect from my ginormous power strip right here. I'll disconnect the heat gun. We don't need this in the truck anymore. And time to get those wires removed and tucked away and put up until I can get back in here and run a proper uh, set of high, uh, high gauge, or actually low gauge, large gauge cables. Because this one's not going to be sufficient right here, I don't think so. All right, guys, uh, GoPro shut down again. It's too hot. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff disconnected. I'm going to safely tuck these wires away so this thing can't uh, charge things and burn up and do all kinds of other nonsense. I actually may just end up hooking this wire uh, up to the battery post for right now. That way we just, uh, that way that all there can do whatever it wants. 
Uh, anyway, all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. The sun is low, the shadows are long. The day is coming to an end and so is this video. So having said all that, as always, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Drop me that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in Duramax in a dual alternator video. End of work week, end of day, end of video, end of transmission.